Hello. In this video, I'm going to go over Paul Harwich's uh, article, The Value of Truth. So as Harwich uh, mentions in the beginning of his article, his title is a bit ambiguous in that, you know, we can read the title to mean various different things. You know, for example, one thing that we that he can mean by the value of truth is uh, perhaps that truth has some kind of intrinsic property that gives it value, perhaps the same way we think of, say, take an, uh, an item that you really, really love, say, maybe an old photo of a family member or something like that. That has perhaps like sentimental value, right? Um, another way in which we can read the title is why is truth uh, valuable to us having, say, as beliefs? So the primary focus of this article, as he puts it, is when we're talking about the value of truth, is the value in holding or having beliefs that in fact are true. So one thing that he's going to be assuming, right, and to some extent is going to be arguing for, is the thesis that he calls VT. So this thesis states that it is desirable to believe what is true and only what is true, right? So given this assumption, right, there are going to be some logical consequences that follow from the fact that uh, VT turns out to be accurate, right? And in fact, it turns out to be accurate. I mean, as of right now, we're kind of assuming that it is accurate because it does seem intuitively accurate. But now let's assume that we, you know, that it in fact VT is 100% accurate. Well, if in fact it is, what seems to follow logically from that is that True, that true beliefs insofar as they are good, right, and the converse of that, false beliefs insofar as they are bad, then one, we will be benefiting individuals uh, by giving them true beliefs. And likewise, we will be harming uh, individuals by giving them uh, false ones or bad ones uh, in that sense. So ultimately, to give you the big picture, what Harwich wants to argue is that not only is VT just intuitively correct, right? But that the value in holding true beliefs is going to come in that some kind of moral value, right? We want to have true beliefs so that when we communicate those beliefs uh, to other individuals and then have them come to believe those things, uh, we are doing them a moral good, sort of say. And vice versa, if we have true beliefs and then we try to persuade other individuals in holding those false beliefs, then we are doing a moral harm or moral bad to those individuals. So then one natural question to ask, right, if so far, I mean, he gives us the, the, the big picture, uh, but obviously there could be possible objections to this. So one thing to ask is if, um, if in fact it is valuable, right, we still don't know quite well, how it's valuable. I mean, we, he gives us that indication that it has to do something with morality. If truth, in fact, is valuable, the same the way that VT entails, uh, why is truth worth bother, bothering with? Well, one possible answer to this is that perhaps truth has some, some kind of instrumental value to it. Uh, that is, uh, an item or something, an entity has instrumental value when it is useful for the purposes of acquiring something else. So, for example, take money. Money is said to be valuable, but money isn't valuable for its own sake or in and it of itself, right? No one actually thinks that money, say you take a $1 bill or a $100 bill, no one thinks that those bills are actually valuable for their own sake. Like you're not worshiping the money. They are instrumentally valuable. They are valuable because they get us other things. You know, they get us food, they get us shelter, they get us comfort, they get us, you know, security, whatever it may be. It's the things that money gets us in, uh, in virtue of which the money itself has value. It is instrumental in getting those things. Money is invaluable in and of itself. So of the answer that, you know, the possible answer that we are considering here to the question, why is truth worth bothering with? Some individuals will say, oh, well, truth also has some kind of instrumental value. In other words, uh, holding true beliefs is only valuable because it gets us some things. What does it get us? Well, it seems to uh, help us be successful in our endeavors, in our actions, right? In other words, you are more likely to be successful in achieving a goal 
uh, if the things that are guiding your behavior, the beliefs that are guiding your behavior turn out to be true rather than false. However, Hardwitch doesn't think that this is a good answer or a good response to the question. And he gives two, uh, four reasons for why that's the case. So the first reason that Harwich gives for why uh, we wouldn't think that truth has instrumental value is because it also seems that self-deception uh, would appear to accomplish the same task, right? Uh, here's an example. I'm not sure if people have watched this movie, uh, and it's not really a case of self-deception, right? But uh, the movie The Truman Show with Jim Carrey, uh, in this movie, uh, Jim Carrey is an individual uh, who whole life is really just this reality TV show of which he's not aware of. Um, so from the moment of birth, I think, uh, his entire life has been filmed. Everybody around him uh, is not really who they say they are. The place where he works, his house, it's all just a TV set. He's completely unaware of it. So in that instance, right, it's fair to say that uh, Truman or Jim Carrey has a bunch of false beliefs, right? A lot of the stuff that he believes is just false. But nevertheless, he is able to live a relatively, we'll say, quote unquote, normal life where, you know, if he goes and pursues a job, he's going to get the job. If he goes and pursues a certain life partner, he's going to get that life partner, right, just based on the information that he has, even though that information is false, right? So what the first objection amounts to is that, look, it's possible to have false beliefs or be deceived or uh, self-deceive and still accomplish the goals that one has. So clearly, uh, pursuing the truth uh, on an instrumental base basis is not why we think that truth is valuable, right? Because you could easily accomplish those same things, maybe not to the same rate or success, but um, you can accomplish those things with also false beliefs. Uh, number two seems to be a little bit of a weaker objection, but, but he mentions that, look, we just assume or we take it for granted that truth seems to be valuable for its own sake or has some kind of intrinsic value across the board. Um, perhaps this could be the case uh, that, you know, I don't know, in order to verify whether this is actually true, maybe you would have to make do some kind of you know, national or world survey and ask people like, why do you think that truth is valuable, right? And if more people say, well, it's valuable for its own sake, there's really no, nothing that we can appeal to or refer to, uh, to say why truth is valuable, then maybe that can give us reason for number two. So I won't say too much about number two. It seems like a kind of weird objection against the instrumental value of truth thesis that he's trying to object. Uh, the first objection definitely seems to be a more substantive uh, objection and also objections number three and four. So for number three, he says, uh, if truth were really instrumental, then one thing that it would entail is that we wouldn't be able to make sense of the pursuit of truths in, say, esoteric fields or fields that no one seems to really care about other than the individuals in those fields. For example, I mean, sometimes philosophy is taken to be an esoteric field or say the study of ancient cultures uh, seems to be an esoteric field because you know whether we know for instance like you know the pottery let's take take like you know somebody who's studying who's studying um, pot making pottery you know protocols procedures in ancient Rome or ancient Mesopotamia well that doesn't seem to you know Knowing facts about ancient Rome or ancient Mesopotamia doesn't necessarily seem to get us anything today in the 21st century. It doesn't seem to like add to our, I don't know, well-being, let's just say, our, uh, you know, our economic prosperity. But these things do seem to be valuable in that it's kind of nice to know them. We get to know more about the world around us. So these uh, acquiring these truths just seem to be valuable in and of themselves, right? However, if truths are merely instrumental, then the pursuit of these truths uh, would seem something that, you know, we shouldn't do, like we wouldn't be able to do because they don't bring any instrumental value, right? But clearly, uh, Harwich wants to say there is value in studying, you know, ancient Roman culture, ancient Mesopotamia, uh, even philosophy, right, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and finally, it seems that, well, not it seems, it is the case, at least for the most part, that when we are, say, dis, uh, discussing ethical issues, you know, like whether it's, is it morally right or wrong to eat animals for food or issues about abortion or issues about, you know, 
climate change, things that have some kind of like moral implication. A lot of times when talking about morality, if not most of the time when talking about morality, uh, we don't, and we, we, we believe, we actually think that there are certain, you know, moral truths. So for example, an example of that would be like, it is true, right? It is true that, you know, quote, it, it is morally wrong to torture babies for fun, right? So everybody thinks, right, if you take the sentence, it's morally wrong to torture babies for fun. Everybody would say that sentence, it is wrong to torture babies for fun. That sentence is true. It is true that it is wrong to torture babies for fun. Why? Is there any instrumental value in not torturing babies for fun or what? Like no one asks that question. It is just true in and of itself, right? There seems to be some kind of intrinsic truth or fundamental truth that it is just wrong to torture babies for fun. So when talking about moral issues, we seem to be operating under this assumption that truth has some kind of like intrinsic value to it, right? And therefore not an instrumental value. And the same comes when discussing issues in epistemology, when talking about beliefs and desires and things of that nature. So ultimately, uh, Harwich maintains that uh, if truth has value, which we assume that it does, if it's valuable to hold true beliefs, the value in holding true beliefs does not come in its instrumental value. It doesn't seem that truth has an instrumental value, that the reason we want to have true beliefs is uh, for the purposes of acquiring or accomplishing certain goals or certain tasks. Okay, well, if that's the case, then why is truth valuable? Like, why is it that truth has a non-instrumental value to it, or, right? Uh, and the response that, you know, we kind of got in the beginning of the article, or at least what was suggested or insinuated is that holding true beliefs has a moral value. It is morally valuable to have true beliefs. And the reason it is morally valuable to have true beliefs is because our beliefs, as mentioned earlier, guide our behavior, right? So the reason, for instance, that you are taking this class, you know, you are watching these videos and so on is because you believe you earn, you truly believe that you are registered for the class. If you didn't believe you were registered for the class, right, then perhaps you wouldn't uh, be joining these, you know, watching these videos and doing the essays and so on and so forth. Um, you believe that you are registered at Cal State San Bernardino. That's why you are continuously logging onto Blackboard for Cal State San Bernardino. You don't think that you are registered at some different university. Otherwise, you, would, you wouldn't be trying to log on to uh, Cal State San Bernardino's Blackboard page. You would be trying to log on to another university's uh, platform, right? So our beliefs not only guide our behaviors in that way, but also we also try to influence other people's beliefs right? We try to do it with our behavior, or sometimes with our words and persuading them, right? I'm trying to do this with you guys, you know, via like this educational process, when we have conversations with people, even what appear to be trivial conversations like, hey, we should eat at this restaurant, not that restaurant, because this restaurant has better service, not that one. We're trying to persuade people, we're trying to have people believe things that we believe. So what Harwood is saying is that, insofar as we're trying to do that, we have some kind of moral obligation to make sure that we uh, transmit our true beliefs to other individuals. Because if we want people to believe what we believe, right, then hopefully what we're trying to do is have them believe things that are true, right? So there is this obligation that we have in, in considering other people's epistemic states. So in order to accomplish that, it's not just that we wanna make sure that they have the true beliefs, but we also want to make sure to have true beliefs because it is within our normal behaviors and discourses throughout the day that we are going to influence other people's beliefs. So the value of truth or the value of holding true beliefs, according to Harwich, is that uh, they have some moral value. Okay, and this concludes this video.